Welcome to the second Wellness Policy Technical Assistance Webinar Series number two. Title, The 10 Required Components for Local Wellness Policy. Our presenters today are Beth Berry, who is Senior Program Manager with Healthier Generation School Program for South Carolina. We also have Courtney Hinch, who is a Program Coordinator with Medical University of South Carolina Bowen Center for Children's Wellness, and myself, Juanita Bowens, who is an Education Associate with South Carolina Department of Education, Office of Health and Nutrition, and I am the Wellness Policy Liaison. With that said, uh, we're going to go through a couple housekeeping, and what we would like for everyone to do is to um, give me a thumbs up that I am still clear, and you can give me a thumbs up or a hand up by looking across the top of your, okay, your screen. And, okay, wonderful. Several folks have raised their hand. Thank you very much. I have several folks who are trying to get into the chat room, and so I'm trying to do multiple things at multiple times. But what we're going to do now is that we're going to pass the mic over to um, Courtney Hinch. Courtney Hinch is with Medical University, as I mentioned, and we're using technology, and so um, we're going to, okay, Courtney. Microphone. Okay, Courtney. Courtney, if you can. Can y'all hear me? All right. So during this webinar today, um, we're going to go into the 10 required components of your local wellness policy. Um, we're just going to highlight each one and then go into best practices for each. Um, so these are the 10 required components. It's policy, policy leadership, public involvement, competitive foods and beverages, foods and beverages provided, food and beverage marketing, nutrition education and promotion, physical activity, and update and inform the public, measure and evaluate, and other school-based activities. So first, policy leadership. So it's important to identify one or more school district or school officials that have the authority and responsibility to ensure each school complies with the policy. Um, you want to identify individuals who are able to hold others accountable for their actions or their lack of um, actions. Um, the superintendent or a designee, a wellness champion, a school nurse, or curriculum coordinator are examples of some policy, um, policy leaders. Then the next, public involvement. Um, it's important to invite individuals from all segments of the school environment to be part of your local wellness policy, to be part of your CSHAC. Um, so invite parents, students, representatives um, from your school food authority, um, teachers of physical education, school health professionals, um, school board members, administrators, and also the, just the general public to participate in the development, implementation, and review and update of your local school wellness policy. Um, getting those different perspectives is very important, having those different people at the table. Um, and then actively engage your CSHAC, um, actively engage C CSHACs meet at least once per year to discuss your district's um, wellness policy goals and progress.
And then um, foods outside the school meal program, um, so competitive foods and beverages. Um, so with this item, um, language stating competitive food and beverages must slash are required to meet federal standards or USDA nutrition standards. Um, your policies don't have to specifically state smart snacks, but just keep in mind that stating encouraged to meet is not in compliance. And I'm going to be passing it over to Juanita. If you can hear me, type. Okay, wonderful. You can hear me. And so the next slide that we'll be going to is um, standards for foods and beverages provided but not sold to students during the school day. And that is very important. The key word here is but not sold. And so therefore, you should set standards for other events where food will be uh, part of the event. For example, school parties, farewell parties, or a birthday celebration. The only uh, caveat to this is that we would love for you to set smart snack standards. But according to USDA guidelines, for food served at celebrations, they do not necessarily have to meet the smart snack standards. But keep in mind, the wellness policy, one of the goals of the wellness policy is to promote wellness. And so in keeping in line with wellness, we would hope that you would set standards that would allow you to uh, incorporate some smart snacks. Okay, food and beverage marketing. Now, this is uh, uh, can be very controversial. Language stating that marketing and advertising is only permitted for food and beverages market meeting federal standards or the USDA nutrition standards during the school day. Some of your policies says encourage. Encourage is not compliance. There's not a choice when it comes to food and beverage marketing. If there is marketing, whether it is your school board that students are exposed to during the day, they must meet smart snack standards. However, if you have an existing uh, school board that your contract is not going to expire until maybe uh, next year or the year after, when you do renew that contract, you should make sure that you bring it in compliance with smart snack standards. The same thing for your vending machines. Now, um, we do know that vending machines um, are usually wrapped with soft drinks, and that is not in compliance even if the machine is turned off. So again, encouraging, using the word encouraged to meet certain marketing standards is not acceptable and should not be in your wellness policy because it will not, you will not be in compliance. Okay, nutrition education and promotion. Now, nutrition education uh, encompasses a lot of things. For example, the traditional curriculum in your health and PE, it was a great way. But also, there are other ways to incorporate nutrition education into your um, school environment. Farm to School is a wonderful example. Uh, not only that, you can incorporate um, the cafeteria um, visits. You can also have taste testing. Also, gardening can become a part of your many of the courses uh, curriculum, incorporating into your curriculum. Uh, bulletin boards around your um, school um, and things like that. These are some examples of nutrition education. Also, working with Corporative Extension. It, Corporative Extension has an uh, office in each county. Working with them would also be a great way to um, incorporate nutrition education into your curriculum. Health fairs are also good examples to um, promote nutrition education. Now, we're going to transition to Beth Berry, who will talk with us about the latter part of the presentation. And again, our goal is to keep it as short as possible. And so at this time, as I'm transitioning to Beth Berry, if there have any questions, you can type your questions in the chat room, and we'll try to entertain one or two questions at the end, or we will type up the answers and send it out to everyone. Beth Berry.
Hello. All right. Now we're going to talk about the goals that are required to be in your district wellness policy in addition to the things that Courtney and Juanita have already mentioned. Your district is required to have specific goals for physical activity um, and sp specific physical activity opportunities. So examples you see on the slide would be opportunities before and after school such as walking and running clubs. Some schools will have step teams. Uh, promoting walking and biking to school. I feel like a really important thing to remember, a lot of our rural schools will say, oh, we can't do that. But it doesn't have to just be walking and biking to school. You can promote walking and biking at school. And you can participate in the National Walk to School Day by walking at school. You can have periodic um, days that you walk at school, and I've seen that be very successful K through high school. Also, uh, another example of the goal would be offering physical activity breaks um, during the school day. Opportunities, um, maybe whether it's recess, whether there are opportunities for physical activity at lunch, walk breaks, and action-based learning activities. So those are some examples. Um, and remember that physical activity opportunities are just as important for staff as they are for students. OK, we are also required to annually update and inform the public about what's going on with our wellness policy. So you might share if you've made any changes. You might share how implementing the local wellness policy is going. And there are a variety of ways to share. The USDA doesn't say how you have to do this. But your district website, social media, your district um, or school newsletters, um, to be able to share this on an annual basis. And you see this is one of the items that is required in your um, administrative review. Also, once every three years, we are required to report on the progress with your local wellness policy. And that is extremely important um, if you need to report the extent to which the schools are in compliance with the local um, school wellness policy. The USDA has um, endorsed using healthier generations assessment to monitor that progress. So you can, if your schools are using that, you can request district reports. Annually, your report is due to the South Carolina Department of Education, a local wellness policy annual progress report every March. That's another way that you are um, monitoring this. And then, again, at least once every three years, your district has to report how your policy compares to a model local wellness policy. So that's something that has to be done every three years. Other school-based activities. Um, that you have to have at least one goal for other school-based activities. So these might be that foods and beverages will not be used as rewards, that they will not be withheld for punishment, making sure drinking water is always available for students. Offering staff wellness programs could be another um, school-based activity. Allowing community members to use the district facilities when they're not in use by the students, like open or shared community use of 
outside facilities, fields, courts, those kinds of things. Um, and some districts will even allow folks to use inside facilities at specific times. And also partnering with your local community organizations, businesses, or hospitals on health promoting activities. So you need to have in your wellness policy at least one other um, school based health promotion activity. If you have any questions, please type them in. And we so appreciate your participation in this webinar. The, uh, we put the link to our first webinar. We appreciate you participating in this second one. Um, remember, if you have questions, you can always um, ask those at wellnesspolicy at ed.sc.gov. We will, I see there is a question about um, sending the link to the PowerPoint, and we can share the PowerPoint with you. Okay, examples of school-based goals. I see um, Ms. Quick has asked about that. Hi, Margaret. We, um, again, school-based goals, just an additional one, as we said, might be employee wellness. It might be that you're going to partner with other organizations or hospitals in the community to promote wellness at your school, whether it's, um, as Juanita mentioned, a health fair or maybe at a field day, you're going to have them there promoting wellness or at a PTA or PTO meeting. Again, not using um, foods or withholding foods or beverages for punishment and not using foods or beverages for reward. So on the document that we sent that has these 10 requ required components, those examples are listed um, there as well. We want to make sure that we're arming um, ourselves with the critical information about protecting our children's health, both their mind, body, and feeding them right and educating them about the power of food and wellness. And we want to give them the best fighting chance for the brightest future they can have. Again, we, we will be sending the link for this presentation. We can also send you the PowerPoint. And on the screen, you will see the link to the first webinar that we did on engaging your coordinated school health advisory committee if you missed that one. Stay tuned for future webinars and um, let us know what your needs are and we are doing our best to address them. Thank you so much. This is the end of the presentation.